Okay, picking back up. Chapter 39. Jonah and God's fire of refinement that you can see a real big discussion on on all ver uh, commentary on verse 4 of Isaiah 53. What that's really about and why God let it out. <clears throat> this is how many of my videos, we changed them, but I think it was after we had put them on video. But I think it's for the best paragraph God has put together in my presence, having me do it. That that you know that was new, completely new. Something like that. So this actually isn't is not in the book itself. It's gonna be. And it's just a few a few chapters. Isaiah fifty three describes the man who will be God's representation. His prophet like Moses speaking and writing his words to the Jewish people, just as he did with Moses and the Israelites. In this day of the Lord, the day described in Malachi 3, where God says he is returning with his messenger, who is Elijah, and the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit. Well, he's a messenger of the covenant that the angel... <laughs> God tells you, Malachi 3, the angel of the covenant you desire is already on the way. Well, Elijah knows this angel. He's been in heaven all this time, right? <laughs> anyway, he receives the covenant. Turns out I'm David, Elijah, and the prophet like Moses, and God's righteous servant. Which surprised me too, by the way. Great names, and very proud of that. But the truth is, all those men, including myself, were men and divine beings because God spoke to them. All were prophets. All served God. I'm serving him right now. God says he's returning. Come, Moshe, come. How about God, come. When you, when you said you were returning, when? God would say, go look at Jeremiah 31. <laughs> I tell you when I'm coming. I got a covenant to deliver. I'll be there. I got to get my prophet like Moses ready. That's me. 16 years of getting ready. <laughs> I'm ready to get to Israel, I can tell you that. that. Teaching this book. Meeting people. Letting them get in the presence of God. He, I, I, I said in the last video, he's within me. And he is. But he's also fills any room I'm in, along with the angel of his presence. You know, in, in the Bible, that's usually when you're told, take your sandals off your feet, you stand on holy ground. The difference in everybody in a synagogue that I'm giving a talk in, that presence surrounds their body. Not so with me. It flows through me. Through my very being, my mind, my body, everything. It flows through me. I literally become a part of the Shekinah. Shekinah is God's presence and the presence of his angel, the Holy Spirit. I'm really, I'm blended into it. And uh, his power envelops me. I am 100% controlled by God. If you have faith and belief that the God of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, um, uh, how you want me first it? Is a good God. And that you can trust his prophet and listen to his words. You know, as as you would have seen, heard me talk about Rambam in the prior chapter. On his a prophet sees the future. We we rebutted that. It's God talking to you. He's, he's within me. I become my existence becomes a part of the Shekinah. It's an interesting life. Stories that people, uh, again, I just have people buy me dinner every night. He, he took me from society just like he did Ezekiel. Ezekiel, go to your house. This is verse 8. Ezekiel, go to your house. I bind you with the cords of my power. You shall not go out amongst the people. 
That's verse 8. And whichever verse it says he was silent as a lamb. Well, he wasn't talking to anybody. Cut off from the land of the living. Cut off. Can't get to. Doesn't mean death. Again, the man's not uh, crucified. He's not murdered. He's not killed at all. Christians don't get that. Toby Singer doesn't get that. And he's got 66,000 followers. I'd like to have 66,000 followers and have a banquet and say, everybody got a quarter. <laughs> i got to get some dental work done. He took me from society. Second week, he said, uh, I told him, I said, uh, God, i got to get on the computer and get some seminar hours and send the state bar in the uh, state of Hawaii. I had two licenses to practice law. Uh, some money to keep my uh, my bar card active. And he said, uh, no. I said, what do you mean no? He said, uh, you're not practicing law again. Mind you, this was, I was 50 years old. And I, my whole life had been the law since I got out of university, Texas A&M, and went to law school. That's all I knew. I said, well, how am I going to make money? And he laughed. He literally laughed. Oh, I get the perception of him laughing. I don't really hear it. And he said, you're not going to have any money. And, you know, even religious people are like that. They, they You know, Jesus said... No material things. The Essenes, the sect not mentioned in the New Testament of Judaism, uh, did not believe in material things. The tested sinning. Wanted to just study scripture and scrolls. Uh, that's just part of not having distractions, God says. No distractions. Don't think about the car you want to buy, or in my case, the motorcycle. They promised me a motorcycle for about three years, and now they never will talk about it. And I told them, I said, that, that's y'all, they're in here with me. It never ends. I sleep like two or three hours a night at best. And uh, so we're always talking for the most part. I said, I'm going to be, for this thing to work, because of Toby Sanger, Kravitz and Skoback, and Jews for Judaism, I'm going to, I'm going to be too old to ride a motorcycle. And they didn't answer me. They was just like, yeah. That's something in the future they won't tell me. Yeah, I mean, they won't be specific about it. Okay, I don't know where I was. Where he says he's returning with his messenger and the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit. He is Moshiach of Isaiah 11, known as the, in quotes, leper scholar in the Talmud. That's what the early sages and early rabbis said. The sages and early rabbis said. They said, we have to have a description. And the only one we got is this 53. And for he is familiar with disease and makes the many righteous with his knowledge Christians, it's not with human sacrifice and blood. With his knowledge. <laughs> I mean, Israel doesn't fit it all. But Jesus is so far removed. And I've got a video on this. I take him to task in all 12 verses. Sages, rabbis, and Christians have never figured Isaiah 53 out. Only God's righteous servant can interpret it properly. That's me. God had it written that way. He did it purposely, just like he put disease and injuries in there, scars. God leaves something out that can be seen in Ezekiel, the key to 53, to make, and this is, this is the description what the fire is for. To make his forehead like adamant, flint, and to not be dismayed by his people. Change your emotions. Change that furious spirit. <laughs> by basically beating it out of it until you can't get mad anymore. 
explaining, man. It's something I didn't And you know, he did it to Ezekiel. would be going, why are you pinning me to the ground again? For the punishment of the, for the sins and the punishment of the house of Israel and Judah. And he'd be like, uh, I'm a priestly man. I've been trying to get himself sin my whole life. Why am I being pinned to the ground? Maltreatment. There's another word that's in there. I call them the big six. Wounded, punished, chastised, maltreated, crushed, and bruised. And the Christian will say all that applies to Jesus and the scourging and the crucifixion. But it doesn't. Those words are to make me the prophet of God, the man who makes the many righteous. Because the people complaining of it are the witnesses of the first six verses, which are combined by quotes. The people who start out verse 1 are the same people in verse 6. And their problem is guilt. That's why I offer myself for guilt to God. That's the guilt. His, our guilt was laid upon him. It's, it's figurative speech. I mean, I didn't buy care. He was wounded for our sins. No, it wasn't. I was wounded to take you from sinning, to bring you into Judaism, back to synagogue, to know the laws of God, and remove your guilt. It will fall away of its own. Plus, you've got sin forgiveness by covenant. It's going to get people back to synagogue. This is going to be a bun for rabbis if they come correct. And my experience right now is just the ones I've been mentioning. And as I, t as I said before, I don't believe they can do it. I think they are pompous and they got an ego <laughs> as big as an ocean. They're egotistical, pompous, and they're ignorant. If you can profess that you are this religious, holy man that loves God and preach the words of randoms over God's, that's pompous. And it's an ignorant thing because if you think God doesn't know what you're doing, he knew what you were going to be doing in antiquity. Which is why he saved the day to come back and straighten it up. And he's got another guy like Moses and Ezekiel, somebody with a furious spirit that he's been <laughs> beaten out of me for 16 years. I laughed more than I ever did in my life, though. I was a pretty sullen person. Got in a lot of fights. To make his forehead like adamant, flint, and to not be dismayed by his people. This is in the book of Ezekiel. He went through God's fire refinement, pinned to the ground and taken from the land of the living, society, after God's spirit entered him and God is in his spirit. God's fire refinement for prophets of wounding, punishment, chastisement, maltreatment, crushing and bruising is to break the will of a man. I have no self-will anymore. All decisions regarding me, Everything, I mean from what I eat, when I eat, sleep, everything are determined by him. <laughs> face to face. Basically, he directs my head, talks to me right here in his power. To break the will of a man, tempering his emotions and removing a furious spirit while teaching him the scripture. He told Ezekiel, too, in antiquity, they had a different way of writing it. God said to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, eat this scroll. <laughs> this is saying he's teaching him scripture. Because after that, he says, now go and tell the people my words. So you're going through the fire refinement, but you're learning at the same time. So, I mean, you get a little relief here and there. And the spirit is just so, he can make me laugh. When God has me on the verge of tears in pain, emotional and physical. Okay, in my case, it was to become his righteous servant and make the witnesses of the combined first six verses by quotation, which, by the way, Tokyo Singer and Jews for Judaism have no clue of. 
neither does the Shabbat organization, nor does art school. None of them have it. I don't know how they got lost, but uh, the JPS has it. 1985 version started brand new. Brand new. And translated the Leningrad Codex, the oldest Hebrew Bible uh, we have. And they did it with trained professional linguistics. And it took them 30 years. God says you cannot get a better translation on the market. It is absolutely great. And that's what's used in this book. The combined first six verses, like, okay, let me start over. In my case, to become his righteous servant and make the witnesses of the combined first six verses by quotation, righteous. It's not because they're righteous because I vicariously took their sins. No, it's knowledge. It's what I'm doing right now, teaching. Trying to draw people back in. God is here. You need to believe. And I have a covenant of sin forgiveness. Everything you've done in the past you think God won't forgive is forgiven. So stay on the straight now from now and get back to synagogue and start studying the Hebrew Bible. Say the time if you want it. It's still got good stuff in it. Now just don't go teaching people with it. They are sick with guilt from sinning. I offered myself for guilt. And this is where Toby Singer mistranslates it. He says the Hebrew phrase for that is guilt offering. Let's go to Leviticus. No, it's not guilt offering. I offered myself for guilt. And basically you can say to remove the guilt of the first six witnesses if you want to write it all out. And I agreed with God. We had a covenant. I'll take the fire of fire and be your prophet and make the many righteous. If you give me long life. Because if you look at 53 closely, it says he might receive long life. And I'm a lawyer. I saw that, Mike. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You got an out in here if you don't want me to stay alive. God said, don't worry about it. You're going through the fire from it whether you want it or not. Now, that's what happened to Ezekiel. They didn't make a deal with him. Didn't crush him with disease. They just seized him and pinned him to the ground, took him from society, chastised him, bruised him, crushed him. <laughs> now, now go teach the exiles. Again, it was only in there for the Christians. I had to suffer cancer because of Christians. So if they think I get a little testy with them sometimes, I do. I do. Because of your foolishness, I had to go to Human sacrifice is not foolishness. By his blood we are healed. When was any one of you actually healed? Or when was your son saved? When has Jesus ever done anything? Then anybody can specifically point to you can't find anything. All you got is a book with a bunch of stories from a time of absolute illiteracy and arrogance and savagery. Stories from storytellers. You know, Islam's got the same thing. It says Muhammad could feed. What, what, what do a hundred people want to hear a story about food? Jesus fed 5,000 with two loaves and three fish or something. Muhammad had tidal waves come off the sea or the ocean and threw fish on all the crowd. So they could eat. These are stories, people. Well, if you believe Jesus fed 5,000 people with two loaves of bread and three fish or five fish, I don't know what it is, then you got to go with the Muhammad story, too. Remember, atheists for 50 years. Some of this, there's a reason I was, too. One, too many bad things happened to me. I was in a hospital every two years. Getting stitched up or something. So, when the witnesses say he was wounded for our sins, I was. Not as a, a, as a vicarious taking of their sins, but to endure the fire of fire. And become the righteous servant who makes the many righteous by his knowledge 
it removes their guilt. That's what the whole story is about. It's a story. Because it shows you that the righteous servant was just as lowly as the witnesses in the first six verses. His life was a mess too. But it says he rose to the crown of God's righteous servant. Something like about a tree. <laughs> And it was. I was a sinner. That's verse 12. Um, I mean, I wasn't a habitual sinner. I didn't walk around just sinning all the time. <laughs> but it seems like one way or another, over my 50 years before God spoke to me, I, I had, I found most of them. I hadn't killed anybody. But uh, it's not like I hadn't thought of it, though. That's again, I, I had a pretty furious spirit and I got in a lot of fights. Well, you know, people think they can pick on me because I don't have a right breast and I got a real small shoulder and I got a withered arm. There's no muscle on it. Oh, bully's been after me forever. And God said, well, you know, it's also good because so many young Jewish men are picked on just for being a Jew. You were picked on just for having a disfigurement. I said, I'll be honest with you, God, really did anybody say anything to me, if ever. He says, that's because you had a look on your face like if they did, you were going to start smacking them. And I said, yeah, I would have. The best, the best defense is a furious, surprise offense. <laughs> I hadn't been in a fight since I was uh, in high school. I think I was 19. Okay, let's get to the chapter. It's only, I think, three paragraphs. This is Jonah and God's righteous. This is how far it goes back. The next one's with Job. I can show you the fire refinement, a little piece of it. Jonah does not want to go to Nineveh and warn the people of God's displeasure with them as he fears they will repent and God will not destroy them. Jonah wants the people of Nineveh destroyed. He's got a furious spirit. He's angry. Being an unwilling prophet and believing the people of Nineveh to be beyond salvation, Jonah flees by ship to Tarshish. He makes a run for it. And of course, God would not be next going there. God creates a storm. Knowing his prophet Jonah will be thrown overboard to his death, and that Jonah has a graphic account of dying. Fire refinement, people. It comes in all forms. Now he is ready to do God's bidding. Uh, the righteous servant becomes devoted to God in Isaiah 53 and go to Nineveh, as he was told to do. Jonah is so emotionally distressed knowing God will relent of his anger on Nineveh, he desires to die. I have begged God to kill me a thousand times and I've cursed him a thousand more. That's how severe this fire refinement is. It is a brutality. <laughs> I asked him one time, I see those six words. You know, wounding, punishment, chastisement, maltreatment, crushing, bruising. I said, uh, Lord, where's, where's torture, torment, heinous acts of cruelty? Look, that's what should be in here. Yeah, heinous acts of cruelty. He won't let me tell you all the story, but even he would concur. Well, it's pretty bad, but it really it just didn't fit. To put that in the in the chapter. Brutal, yeah. Brutal. He put a pain on you anywhere, any kind of thing, so many different ways. And you think to yourself, I can't I can't take this for five minutes. I'd rather be gut shot again. Which he orchestrated by the way. So I beat fit fifty three. So I've been gut shot and had three cancers because of it being 53. And here I got to fight morons, and you can tell them I said so, based on their commentaries 
on Isaiah 53, to me, they're almost illiterate to me. But then again, I am a prophet of God, and I learn from God. And they just learn from other rabbis. Moron. <laughs> I see, that's right. Again, he controls what I say. So God prepares another lesson to Jonah. He desires to die. Oh, that was too much, huh? Well, think about it. He just about drowns, gets scooped up by a whale, and thrown up onto the beach. <laughs> Couldn't have been a pleasant experience. And and he's still angry. He still hasn't gotten rid of that furious spirit. He's still angry. God's <laughs> in his fear that Nineveh will repent. He doesn't want them to. He wants them destroyed. It's got the same kind of spirit, Moses and me and Elijah, and I guarantee you, King David too. God prepares another lesson for Jonah. He comforts him. Oh boy, this is one of his favorite tricks. He comforts him with a shade plant. So he is happy and loses his anger. In other words, the pain will be brutal, brutal. And then he'll act like you're his friend. And then, it's going, and then he just comes at you again. Just, you know, it's just relentless. Then God takes the shape plant of wood and brings wind and heat that physically make Jonah so miserable he desires to die again. A thousand times, people. And that's probably not enough. God will cause the circumstances and expose the prophet to death to get him to do as he is told or to offer himself for guilt as he did with me as he does with the righteous servant of Isaiah 53, he will inflict emotional pain and physical pain so great the prophet will desire death. The righteous servant of Isaiah 53 is stricken and crushed with disease and then is chastised, punished, maltreated, crushed, and bruised in the power and words of God until he is suitable for God's purpose and taught the scriptures so that by his knowledge he may make the many righteous. I'm still in the fire. The last two years have been the toughest yet. It just keeps escalating, getting tougher. I'm like, God, I can do this. I can teach your books. They don't care what they say about me. I know, you know, 90%, 95% of the people are going to say, we don't believe you, you're a liar, you're crazy. You're schizophrenic. You can't possibly acknowledge you. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and people who won't read the proofs. I said, God, I know more than any of them. It doesn't bother me. I got you with me. Well, don't let me get upset. He can control my emotions. I don't know why I'm in the fire on the side that he's letting me do. He's got a great humor, you know. He's got a personality so much different than anything y'all can imagine. But don't ever think of him as human. He's a different entity altogether. You know, you can't say, this is something I did in the first couple of weeks. I said, you wouldn't do that. And he laughed. He said, this is after he told me, your pain means nothing to me. And then we're out on a walk and things started happening. And I said, you wouldn't do that. It was so me down a gully uh, where there was nothing but huge granite stones in a, a creek. And he was pushing me over there in his power. You know, it's an invisible power moving you around. It's, it's kind of, it takes getting used to it. And he said, Keith, there is nothing I will not do, no low I won't go to, to change your personality and your emotions. And again, you know, it makes you angry all the time. You start to lose anger. He doesn't want you to be embarrassed and this and that. So he puts you in situations where you're embarrassed. Has you say things you want to say. Makes you do uh, uh, type things. Then when you see him later, you go, why don't you have me type that? That's obviously not correct. And again, it's part of being in the fire. He says, I'm out of the fire. He says, you can always be made better. And the Jewish people don't understand this. 
they understand the reason they're still here.